Does fasting hurt the good bacteria in your gut? This is a question from Tim. Tim Harrison asked, My functional medicine doctor encourages me to continue intermittent fasting. However, she has cautioned me against fasting for multiple days. Her logic is, is that we're working hard to rejuvenate my gut biome. All these little bugs in that belly need food, and if I starve them, I may be undoing all the effort to rebuild my biome. He means a microbiota. I would really like to trigger serious autophagy, but she introduced some doubt for me. So this is a great question. The first thing I have to say that I don't know the reason why she works hard to rejuvenate your microbiota. Uh, you may have some medical conditions. So what I'm about to say is relevant to healthy people and the majority of people in our longevity community who do not suffer from issues that require some tailoring of programs to heal the gut bacteria. So the situation is this. Today we lack the understanding of the small details of the gut microbiota. We are not really sure about how they respond to different stressors and which type of bacteria is relevant in what situation, how they communicate with one another, because the balance of these bacteria is critical to how they function and how they communicate with our bodies. However, here is my quote-unquote gut feeling about this in relating to longevity. There is more to your body than the three pounds of bacteria that sit in your gut and the entire body, also on the skin. And bacteria are more critical in specific conditions, such as development of children and babies, neurological issues, autoimmune diseases, gut issues, IBS, and immune strength. With longevity, the DNA in every cell of your body, how it responds to the stressor that you put, and also the hormones that float around your blood and communicate with 30 trillion cells, they matter to a greater degree. And when we want to increase our lifespan, we need to think about that as well. So what's the contribution of bacteria to longevity in healthy people? It is reducing inflammation. Inflammation is actually one of the mechanisms, one of the longevity pathways that activates longevity. So what I'm trying to say here is that bacteria matter, but we have to view them in the right context. Besides being afraid of killing bacteria, you know, germs, they know how to survive under extreme stress. You can ask that in any hospital. It's not easy to kill them. And this is why we sometimes we need to take antibiotics. I suspect that most bacteria are resistant to a few days of fasting. And if they die quickly from two to three days of fasting, so maybe you can let the weak to die and then take probiotics afterwards. And I think what happens when we fast routinely is that we end up with more fasting resistant bacteria. And in essence, bacteria, they adapt to us. They are the parasites, quote unquote, on our body. We feed them and they have to respond to what we eat. They have no choice. They have to adapt. And lastly, the greatest danger in our gut actually comes from the overgrowth of yeast, a type of fungi also called candida. Most people have too many of them because the antibiotics don't wipe them out. But fasting does wipe them out and provide a place to sit for the good bacteria, the probiotics that you take after the fasting. So fasting, in essence, opens up the musical chair on your gut because on every tiny cell on your gut, there is only one room for one bacteria. There are not excess spaces. And sometimes fasting actually allows good bacteria to catch their seat in the musical chairs game. The bottom line is this, unless you have some condition related to gut bacteria that requires expertise, simply taking probiotics after the fast or eating fermented foods, for example, will do the job and allow healthy bacteria to take their places. Let the strongest and the fittest to survive. Focus on your longevity, not on theirs. So I hope I provided some insight into that. Until the next time, stay young, stay healthy, and see you in the next video.